morning, my friends, and welcome to your Toronto Zoo. My name is Jackie, and our mission here at the Toronto Zoo is to connect people, animals, and conservation science in order to fight extinction. Today, we're going to be doing a primary program, a virtual program, in which we're going to be focusing on senses and animal movement. And our first visitor that we're going to go and see is the Muir Tiger. So I'm going to switch the camera around so that we can take a better look at them. So this is Vasily, our Muir Tiger. Now I forgot to talk about our senses. So before we do have a quick look at Vasily, what I'm going to do is actually make sure that we recognize what our senses are. So if you look at your eyes, that's what you see with. That's your sense of sight. Your nose is what you smell with. And then you taste using your taste buds inside of your mouth. You have your ears. Mine are hidden under my hat and they're outside of my head. Those are external ears that we use to listen with. And then we have our sense of touch. So all animals have though most of those senses to a certain degree and sometimes even more. So I'm going to show you Vasily, our mirror tiger right now. We'll just zoom in. He's eaten a nice big bone there, which is great for his teeth. So if you look closely, their eyes are actually very good. They're very good because they're similar to ours and they can actually judge distance. The reason why that's a good thing is because they are predators and they actually hunt during the night. Now their eyes are built quite differently than ours because they are able to see in the dark much better than us because they have special cells in them that enable them to see with very low light conditions. Their eyes are also much bigger than our own and they're lighter in color. They're usually either a golden color or an amber, which is kind of a yellowy orange, and that allows them more light so that they can see. There you go, there's a nice shot. So their eyes allow in more light than ours so that they can see better. And so they can tell whether something is moving in the dark and then pay more attention to it. But because of that, they're not able to see the same colors that we do. So they actually see only the colors red, blue, and green mostly. Now, they do have a good sense of hearing as well. And you might be able to tell that Vasily can actually turn his ears around. We can't do that. So his sense of hearing is better than ours because it can pinpoint the direction of a sound. Their paws there, they don't use them really for the sense of touch, the same thing like we do. Instead, on his mouth, you can see that he has whiskers. They also have whiskers above their eyes and throughout their body. And that helps them to sense their environment or around their body. So when they're moving through trees and different areas, their body or their um, whiskers will be able to tell them whether or not they can fit through a certain space. And that helps them to sense their environment or touch their environment and tell them whether they can fit. The one thing that they don't have that is as good as our sense is their taste. Um, so their sense of taste, they only have 500 uh, taste buds, whereas we have up to 9,000. So they can't really sense any sweet tastes. <laughs> it looks like he's having a nice time. So the only thing we haven't touched on is his smell, the sense of smell. So tigers in general have a special organ called a Jacobson's organ that they use in combination with their nose in order to smell or taste the air. So I'm going to show you a special sign that kind of tells you, you might have even seen your own cat do this before. It's called the Flemin response. It's a specific behavior, which is when they look like they're growling and they curl open their lips, but they're not saying anything. They're not, there's no sound. And what happens is they're actually smelling or tasting the air in order to find out more about that smell. And from that, they can communicate with other tigers and find out if they want to be friends or even enemies. So it's a really interesting sense that they have that's special to big cats and some other animals as well, which we'll be seeing today. You get a really nice shot of their whiskers there above their cheeks, right there. And then also you can see a few up above its eyes too. All right, guys, we're going to keep on moving here. Speaking of movement, what kind of movement do you think tigers actually make? Because we're going to move along and see some more animals. But tigers, they're big cats, right? And they have to hunt. So they're going to be 
stalking their prey, right? They want to be able to sneak up really quietly so they can walk, they can stop, they can of course run. They're very good swimmers. And what else can they do? Can they jump? They certainly can. And what else can they do? Let me think. They can climb too, but not as much as like a monkey or anything like that. But they are decent climbers. So as we keep on going, we should probably talk about the next animal that we're going to see. Um, which is, let's see if you can guess. This animal lives somewhere where it's really hot sometimes. And because of that, you might only be able to hear them off in the distance or even smell them. And that's because their pee is really, really strong. Um, and you can smell it a long way away. And that's because it's concentrated. There's not a lot of water in it. And that's because in the place where they live, there's not a lot of water. Does anybody know what we're going to go and see? It's our camels. That's right. So just like any other animal, all animals need four different things in order to survive in their habitat. Food, water, shelter, and space. So they have to be able to move around and have adaptations or creature features in their body in order to survive in their habitat. So that's why it has really strong smelling pee. So the next time you're at the zoo and you go around the Eurasia area, you might think, I can smell something. That's probably the camels because they need to make sure they're saving all the water that they can. So we're just going around the corner here. And we're going to see if we can spot an animal or two because there's lots of walking. Sorry, it's so bumpy, guys. We'll see if we can spot any of our red pandas here. But they're often not viewable because they are nocturnal, just like the tiger. So active at night, not during the day. Let's see if they're out here. And we'll just catch a quick, quick glimpse and see if they are out or not. Hmm. It's like an I spy game. We're searching fine, trying to see if they're out this morning. Nope, I don't see them. But, so we'll keep on going. But they do are excellent climbers as well. So that's another way in which an animal might move in order to find its basic needs, like I said. Let's switch it around. So I promise this is like a, a bit of a walk, but it's worth it. So we have two species of um, camels here at the zoo. Or sorry, there are two species of camels and we have one of them. So there's Bactrian and dromedary camels. Bactrian means that they have two humps. And the way I remember it is because Bactrian starts with a B and if you lie a B on its side, it has two humps, right? Whereas dromedary, which starts with the letter D, only has one hump if you were to lay it on its side. So we have Bactrian camels. So we have about six with us in our family here at the zoo. Um, the biggest one is our male. His name is Zip and he's big and blonde so you can identify him really easily. And then we have the baby, Zuri. She's the smallest. And then the one that has the tongue hanging out, at least that's how I identify a couple of them out of the herd, is um, Tilly. Um, and she's a big female. She's the oldest. And here they are. They're not being very vocal today. But as we get closer, we'll be able to take a good look at them as well as some of their adaptations that they had in order to survive in their habitat. Here we go, guys. Perfect. There's the baby right there. Now, perfect. So camels have a really good sense of um, sight as well as uh, hearing, but they also have a super sense, which I'm going to be speaking about. So their sense of sight is very good because they have a wide field of view, which it kind of doesn't really make sense when you first say it, but it means that they can see a really big area because their eyes are located on each side of their head. So they can see almost everywhere around them, except for right behind them. They have a little blind spot, but that's because they want to make sure they are looking out for predators. There we go, Zuri's just having a little bit of milk. 
Um, so their eyes are really big and they also have something called a nicotating membrane, which is a third eyelid that helps to protect them from the sand and also it helps to keep them moisturized so that they don't get dried out because they live somewhere where it's really hot sometimes, right? And really sandy. So they want to make sure that their eyes don't get hurt. Um, they also have two sets of really big thick eyelashes which help to keep out the sand and that helps keep their eyes nice and healthy. They also have lots of hair inside of their ears and that helps to prevent out the sand. And then um, they also have really interesting noses. And I'm going to talk about their sense of smell next because that is their super sense. They are able to smell up to three kilometers, that's like 30 soccer fields, away when they're smelling for a certain smell called a pheromone. It's a specific scent that other camels leave and that's how they communicate with each other. So they have a very good sense of smell. And because of where they live, they want to conserve as much water as they can. So right in the middle of their nose, there's a specific groove that runs from each nose and the nostrils can close as well to shut out so that they don't have any sand. But from each slit of the nostril, it goes down into one central groove and then it goes into their mouth. So if they happen to sneeze and lose some moisture or snot even, then it will go right into their mouth. And I know the parents are thinking, oh my goodness, this sounds like my child. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to keep on going. Unfortunately, they're not moving, but if you've ever seen a camel move before, they move in a very specific way. Has anybody seen one before? If not, I want you to go and look on YouTube for a camel that walks. I'm hoping that somebody will walk a little bit, but they walk in a way in which their front legs and their back legs move at the same time. It's called pacing. That's right, buddy. Come on over. Hi. Hello. That's a good boy. I should say girl. There you go. So you can see the front and the back leg move on the same side right after each other. And that's called pacing. So front leg, front leg, back leg, front leg. So it's on the same side. They move at the same time. So if you want to try that at home, you can, right? And that is a special way in which the camels all walk. So we're going on our next adventure here. And we're gonna go and see if we can spot any more animals on our next short little walk. So Eurasia is a really big area. It's great for walking in, especially in the winter time, because it's good exercise for one, and there's lots of animals to see. There's nobody here, especially today, because the zoo is still closed. But normally we are open 364 days a year. And I know people are thinking, what? I didn't know the zoo was open in the winter time. You're absolutely right. We are. The only day that we don't close, or are not open, I should say, is um, Christmas Day. Other than that, we're always open. Um, and right now, obviously. Okay, we're going to turn around, guys. This next animal, let's see if we can spot any here. So right here is our drive-through area. It's normally where the yaks and the Przewalski's horses are. And you're able to grab a zoomobile through that area, but I don't see them out right now. So we'll keep on going. But it is a really nice thing that you can do with your family is grab a ride on the Zumo when you're next year. And when we open up our doors and it's safe to do so, as you get a really nice up close look at some of the animals. And sometimes they walk right in front of the uh, Zumobile. And we just did a winterized Zumobile too, so we'll be able to do that all year round once we're able to open up again and it's safe to do so. Our next animal that we're about to see is known for its eagle eyesight. Any ideas? Hmm. Let's switch the camera around. <gasps> I just missed it. You missed the flying stellar sea eagle. And we'll get a nice up close view here, guys. They have a really keen sense of sight. I'm going to sneak up on this side here. We're going to go through the bushes. I'm allowed to because I'm staff. There we go. Perfect. So this is our stellar sea eagles. And they are the largest sea eagle in the world. The heaviest. Females are up to 15 to 20 pounds. And their wingspan is six to eight feet. That's 
bigger than if your parent was to raise their hands above their head. And that's just the size of their wings when they spread them out. There we go, flying over. So as you can see, they have great big talons and a hooked beak. Um, so they're known as a raptor. And the reason why they have eagle eyesight, or they were given that name, is because their eyes can see really, really far away and have a lot of detail. They have vision like ours, where they can judge distances, but also colors as well. So just to compare our eyesight to theirs, if we were to look at the edge of a soccer field, we would be able to see the goalposts. But if they were able to see the end of the soccer field, they could also see a mouse on the ground and even how many whiskers that mouse had. So that's how keen their eyes are. So they don't eat mice. Well, not regular anyway. Their main diet is actually fish. Um, and so it's really important for them to be able to see well when they're diving down when they're flying in order to grab their lunch with those talons there. So their sense of sight is very, very keen. And then their sense of touch is actually their talons, what they use to grab their food and their beak in order to pull it apart. So like we would use our hands to eat, they use their beak and their talons for their sense of touch. Now their hearing is quite good as well, but they don't rely on it the same way that we do because theirs is mostly sight that they have to worry about in order to get food to survive. And so they have something called internal ears, which means they're inside their head, heads. Birds have them usually on the inside and you just can't see them because they're covered in feathers. And here we go. So this is Alec and Katya. The larger one would be Katya or female and Alec is the smaller male. All right guys, we're gonna check out one more animal. Let's see if you can guess what it is. It's a type of leopard that lives in Eurasia and it's very, very elusive. That means it's kind of shy and you don't get to see it very often. So we're gonna have to sneak up on it like it would on its prey and kind of see if we can find it because it camouflages very well in the area where it lives up in rocky ledges. So let's see if we can find him. I'm just going to switch the camera around so it's not as bumpy when we're walking along. It's a lot easier to focus on me when we're walking as opposed to all the trees in front. So what we're looking for is a big cat that likes to um, hunt and sleep and stay where there's lots of rocks and ledges and it's kind of grayish in color. And let's see if we can spot them. Can anybody guess what it's going to be? And let's see if we can find them. I'm just going to lower my voice a little bit. Let's see if we can spot them. Mm, like I said, they are very tricky to spot because they are kind of shy. Okay, we're going to keep on going around the corner. The other day I was lucky enough to see them right up close through the window. Now they are another predator, so they have very keen eyesight as well. And that's because their vision is like ours, where they can actually see how far things are away from them. But like a tiger, they are built just to allow more light in so they can see better at night because these guys are crepuscular, meaning that they're active more at dawn than dusk. Okay, we're just going to have another look here. Hmm. So there is a den over there that I see with some hay. So let's check that out a little bit further. And, oh, is that something? I can't see from here. But I did see her right up close right here the other day. And that would have been amazing. So let's just go around and see if we can find them. But if you haven't guessed already, it's the snow leopard. So snow leopards are really cool because, like I said, they, oh my goodness, I missed it. Did you guys see it when I was there? I just walked right by it. Maybe through the window here. I spotted it. You guys might have seen it, and I didn't. Look closely, look closely. There they are. So these guys are solitary in nature. And so, oh. and so we only have one out on display at a time. Solitaire means just single by themselves. 
you know, see if I can zoom in for you. But she's actually watching us, or he, I'm not sure. So we have three here at the zoo. We have the mom, Anna, and then we have her two kids, um, Milo and Kita. And um, there we go. So they sense things that very similar to the way that the tiger does. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but they too have a third eyelid to help protect their eyes. Kind of, they work kind of like a windshield wiper. Oh, is she going to jump for us? That would be amazing. No, nope, she's going to go and hide. She's right behind the bush. She's like, nope. And that's okay. But their eyesight is very good, similar to what the tiger's is, because they have to see from far away. They have a very good sense of smell as well. And they are able to communicate using that sense of smell and that same organ called the Jacobson organ in order to taste the air and communicate and smell specific smells so that they can tell whether they want to be friends or enemies with other snow tigers in the same area and keep safe. And then they can also smell their prey from really far away. The really nice, neat thing about this animal is that it too um, can turn its ears around so that it can pinpoint the sound of any prey and then its eyes are adapted for movement as well so it can spot anything even in low light conditions where there isn't a lot of light so at like dusk um, or dawn when you're first waking up or going to bed that's when they start to hunt now for movement they are the best jumpers they can actually leap up to nine meters or 30 feet that is about two lengths of cars and parked in a row so that's really really far and it's very important that they're able to do that because all of the animals that they eat are very, very agile climbers as well. So these guys have short, stocky legs that allow them to climb with ease and then really big, stocky back legs or long, um, strong back legs in order to help push them up and jump really far. And then when they're running at top speed on all the rocks and ledges, they have to use a super long tail that they have, which is almost as long as their body, in order to make sure that they balance themselves and don't fall off the cliff themselves, right? So they have to have a lot of special adaptations in order to survive in their environment and use all the different senses that they have as well. So a neat thing about their eyes as well is that they are gray or green in color. Um, and the Amur tiger that we saw, I said was amber or gold. So a little bit different than our eyes. All right, guys, because she is being a little bit shy, which is normal for her, I'm just gonna sign off and say thank you very much for joining us. If you had a good time, make sure um, to book your own personal program at torontozoo.com, just under the Zoo to You profile or tab, and um, book your own personal tour, and that way you can ask all the questions that you want and hopefully learn some new cool animal facts. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Uh, until we're able to see you in person, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. Bye.